yeah, I think I'm here because of uh, having been able to fail pretty consistently, relatively early, um, and and in my case, bounce back from or learn from each of them. You know, we mentioned one already. We mentioned um, not making it into the academy. Lifelong ambition since I was a little kid, getting the letter doesn't even, I remember how hurtful it was that it didn't even say try again next year. You know, it didn't even uh -huh. suggest that, I, that there was any hope for me. It was, you know, goodbye, good luck, uh, and off you are. It's brutal. That was a pretty brutal one. And I was very fortunate that, and I didn't, the only thing that I did after receiving that was pivot to option B. I was going to go to the University of Missouri, Columbia, uh, become a Mizzou Tiger and figure out how to get into the Air Force from there. I get a call uh, from Senator, I think Danforth's office at some point saying, congratulations, you're going a couple of weeks before basic training. And here we go. So I, there was really the only thing that I could do in that moment is maintain some degree of, of calm, mental toughness, we'll find a way and not get disappointed. Uh, the next the next big failure that comes to mind was after the Air Force announces that we're cutting pilot slots across the board, after the, the chief of staff of the Air Force tells um, everybody at the Air Force Academy that only 225 of us per class are going to be able to go to pilot training at a time when if you were if you were alive with a heart that was beating and your eyesight was good, you know, our and you and you could meet graduation criteria, even with a 2.0, you're going to pilot training. That was a tough. That was a tough piece of news. It was worse for the seniors and juniors. It was too late for them. But for us freshmen, there was a chance, right? So now the competition was on. You're out there trying to position yourself to get one of those slots. And the key was differentiation, doing something that would highlight to somebody that you're meant to go fly. Uh, I put all my eggs in the, let me, let me jump out of airplanes basket. Let me differentiate myself by being a member of the Wings of Blue Parachute team. I made the team. My roommate made the team. It was a very, very uh, unique thing that two of us from the same uh, dorm room make the team together. And then I get a horrible cold right, right before our uh, oh. first high, high altitude. So actually, we have to go to the altitude chamber to go get ready for our first high altitude jump. I've got this massive cold, hits at the wrong time, like totally unlucky. I'm like, no big deal. I'll just go to the chamber some other day. And they say, no, if you can't make tomorrow's chamber ride, you're out. Wow. I'm like, wait a second. Was I've made the team, but I'm going to be cut because I'm sick the wrong day. Three of us get cut because we all have brutal colds. Uh, and that was a devastating loss because not only was jumping out of airplanes actually really <laughs> was stupid, but it was really cool. Uh, but it was also so exclusive that, you know, it was setting me apart from everybody. And I thought this was my strategy to get one of those uh, valued slots. Now my roommate still on the program, but I'm not. And through no fault of my own, that was hard. That was, that was arguably harder than not making the academy. So then the question is, what do you do from that? And I, I feel like that helped condition me. Hey, nothing ever goes according to plan. Few things are going are gonna to work exactly as you envision. So the big question is, what are you going to do on the heels of that to bounce back, to be resilient? Uh, and I'll shift my strategy and eventually it works and I make it into pilot training. Another example, and I mean, there's, there's, Justin, there's so many. Like, I love it. Yeah. Nothing but like failed here, failed here, failed here, failed here. When I graduated number one in my pilot training class, I won almost every award in my pilot training class. In pilot training, I proved that I knew since I was four years old that this is what I was supposed to do with my life. So like, it was not a shock to me that everything went so well. Uh, and it's not an it's not an arrogant statement. It's just I knew in my heart of hearts this is what I was supposed to do, and I loved pilot training because I was finally doing it. And then I make it to F15 school. And here it is, you know, win all these awards, uh, thinking I'm doing all right. I show up to work on a Monday. We're entering into a new phase of instruction. There's two of us flying against one bad guy. So two F15s flying against one bad guy F15. First time that we're ever having to pull Gs while communicating on the radio and oh, shooting wow. at somebody while not shooting at the wrong person, like figuring out in this whirling dervish of airplanes, like which one is the one that you're supposed to be targeting, you know, and you're trying to stay awake. And it's, 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 it's really, really complex. It sounds really hard. It's, it was actually, it was, it was shockingly hard. Okay. And you've never done this before in pilot training, you, you know, you're learning how to take off and land and, and how to fly close formation, but not like how to, you know, shoot somebody while you're at nine times the force of gravity. So I'm doing this thing, come back down, feeling pretty good. My instructor's like, dude, we dominated up there. We rocked it. I'm like, 
yes, I, I knew I was meant to do this. When we start looking at the tapes, and in the book, I talk about tape review. And in, in the flying world, we go back and we look at the tapes of what it was that we did to help validate whether or not we did what we thought and also to learn. Just like in baseball, you're looking back at the tapes, you're, you're taking a look at what you can learn. Turns out I shot my flight lead. Oh. Turns out that though I thought I was doing the right thing, I was doing exactly the wrong thing. And like it's an egregious thing. You shoot your buddy. That's really, really bad. Yeah. And and not only is that like a horrible feeling in the pit of your stomach, and not only do you feel like the world is turned upside down, but that's an automatic fail. Like you shoot your teammate, you're, you know, that you're in school, right? You're you're there, you have to validate that you can do what you're supposed to. So I've failed that ride. So now I have to go to what we call an X ride, which is a hey, you're redoing that thing because you didn't get it right the next the previous day. On the X ride on Tuesday, I'm so amped up, like I cannot believe that I did so horribly yesterday that I, I want to, you know, just dominate. The very first turn that we did, the very first maneuver that I do, I over G the airplane. And so in the, in the headset we hear, and we affectionately call um, the voice in our ears, bitch and Betty usually only says bad things to us. She announces <laughs> over G over G. So I've over G the, I've pulled more than nine times the force of gravity. And I've done this within the first, two seconds of the mission. So now that's an immediate fail. So, so I'm curious, have, what does that do? If I can, what does that, like, what is over gene? Does that make you pass out? Or what does that do to the airplane? No, it overstresses the airplane. So the airplane okay. is rated to be able to pull X many Gs. So in the FFP, I didn't know that. We're a nine G airplane. So if you pull 9.1 Gs, you've gone beyond the design specs of the airplane. And now the airplane has to be taken apart potentially and everything has to be inspected to figure out have you have you like broken this beyond repair or wow. is this thing safe to fly that's crazy yeah. i had so no here's, idea here's, here's, oh yeah and i mean it like it's so easy to do is the other piece of this you know and so you still you're still so early in the program you're still getting familiar with this massive piece of machinery and like overging happens all the time in those phases as you're trying to get accustomed to but if it happens on an X ride that now, now, now you're going to an elimination ride. So by Wednesday, I'm one ride away from being kicked out of my live stream. And if I mm -hmm. don't, if I don't pass, you know, I'm flying a bomber or a transport or something that I, I would, I would be honored to do, but it wasn't my dream. So look at it. Monday, I'm on top of the world. By Wednesday, I could be done. That's how fast things change. And by the skin of my teeth, I passed the elimination ride. But now I spend the rest of my F-15 journey on double secret probation. So like, <laughs> I've got all these like, you know, I have to have extra counseling with my uh, with my flight commander. And there's, everybody has to review every grade sheet to make sure that I'm safe. I mean, this is not the, the status that I was in in pilot training. But now I've worked my way into I'm the bottom of the bottom, the lowest of the low. And I remember when I graduated F-15 school, just being so thankful that I made it through, but it was so painful to get there. And I, I wanted to leave as fast as possible. Um, and in the midst of that, I remember <clears throat> one of my leaders coming up to me and saying that his roommate had experienced the same thing when he was going through F-15 school, literally the exact same sequence there and, and went to an elimination ride on day three and is now a weapons school graduate. And I remember thinking to myself, good for him, right? What a great story for him. But like, <laughs> It's irrelevant to me. I'm on the cusp of elimination. Anything that you say can't help me. I'm, I'm just I'm just angry at the world. What's fascinating is, is that when I graduated and I went to my first operational assignment, my very first weapons officer was that guy, the oh. guy that had also failed in that same phase of flight and eventually made it to weapons school. And he was the, the person that started me off on my journey to becoming a weapons school uh, graduate. 